You guys have one of those garages where your workbench just isn't enough for, say, a project you need to work on, and uh, there's just not enough room. If it was a sheet of plywood or something like that, just is almost too difficult to do it in a small garage or a small workshop like I've got here. And at some point in time, you need to make an extra space or create an area to, let's say, throw a sheet of plywood down or to paint some boards on or something. So inevitably what you do is you go out and you buy these cheap plastic sawhorses because your storage area is limited and these things fold up nice and flat. Pretty simple design. The only bad thing is, is they're not very wide. That's about 30 inches across. And the other issue that I always seem to run into with these things is this hinge point. It gets bound up. It's very hard to get the fold out like it should and on occasion they break so you're constantly messing with that what I want to show you guys today is two different style of uh, workstations that I've come across that I think some of you may have not ever seen the one that I've got and works pretty well and I've done a update to another one that I just picked up so I'd like to show you those real quick so what I got here is a stand from Harbor Freight. And what it is, is it's a uh, portable work stand. I just paid $21 for this stand here. And what it comes with, this uh, X type of frame that just opens up, it comes with these chains that you hook on to open up to whatever distances you want. So you can go out to a really far distance and make it lower and wider if you need it to be lower and wider and what makes these stands kind of nice is that you can set this at a specific height and make it comfortable or whatever for that that working height that you want to work on the other thing this comes with is these are a foam pad on here and where you'll see a lot of these used is maybe in, in auto body shops or things like that, where they'll lay a door or a hood or something on there and that foam protects it from uh, getting hit into the metal. So that's one thing that's nice about the stand, but it's also one thing that's bad about the stand because let's say you wanna take a, a board and you're gonna do a lot of work on these or use these in uh, carpentry work that foam's going to get tore up pretty darn quick from trying to slide boards on this and doing, doing different functions or let's say a sheet of plywood. And let me show you real quick what I did to fix that scenario. I took a couple pieces of uh, inch and a quarter PVC and I cut out three quarters of an inch wide strip down through there which is the thickness of this tubing. The foam's thicker, but the foam fits inside of these. So the reason for doing this is if I'm gonna be doing woodworking where I wanna set a board or plywood or something like that on there, I just slide this right over it. It doesn't touch the foam because the foam is smaller in diameter than the inside of the tubing. Slide that over, let me slide that back a little. Slide that on there, slide this one on here. And it's really just that simple to slide them on. Now, I've got a surface that I don't have to worry about sliding boards across. It won't tear that foam up or whatever I'm doing on here. So now I've made this more of a universal type of work stand. Some of you might say, well, just take the foam off. Well, you can't take the foam off because of the way these things are designed. And let me show you real quick. When you build these and put them together, you have to slide it up over this tube and on. So the only way you could ever take this foam off is if you took the stand apart and then slid the foam off. So that would make it pretty difficult to go back and forth between uses. Um, you could just remove the foam entirely and never use these for anything 
that might be delicate or you didn't want scratched, but I guess I just didn't want to go that route. I wanted a stand that was ready for one or the other. All right, and another nice thing about this stand is compared to a sawhorse. So when you open this stand, it gives you two surfaces to rest on one stand. Opposed to a sawhorse, when you open it up, and again, there goes that hinge, it's bound up. But, so we open the sawhorse up, and you have one surface. So now you've got to go get your second sawhorse to create two surfaces. So you've got to go get both stands, where in this case, or this instance, this one stand will accommodate. But what I did, knowing that uh, I'm going to get into bigger pieces, I bought a second stand. I've got some boards here that I want to cut. And put that board on there. And I'm out cutting something by myself. And I need to cut this uh, eight foot board in half. And let's just say this big red line was the center of the board I want to cut. Hopefully you're starting to see the picture here of what I'm getting at. When you do it on a sawhorse, you've got one on each side one point of contact here and one point of contact here on a sawhorse and you go to cut that board, the first thing that board does is it tips down and it pinches or it binds on you or whatever. Let's say I want to cut this board and I go ahead and I set my two stands up away from each other. I cut right through. This stand holds the board on this side and this stand holds the board on this side. Unlike a set of sawhorses. And most people don't look at this type of stand as a uh, construction or a carpentry type of stand. They look at more at as an automotive stand. But I'm looking at this thing thinking, man, that's really going to actually make it nice for doing things like this. And let's just pretend this is a big sheet of plywood that's on here. Put my line at the center, move it, and I can cut right through. I don't have to worry about cutting into any kind of sawhorse or two by four, because a lot of people will straddle a two by four lengthwise on a four by eight sheet on both sides of that. And now you're cutting through the two by four just to cut the uh, sheet of plywood. Go price out two by fours. Unfortunately, they're just getting too expensive to be sacrificial pieces of lumber anymore these days. So thinking along the lines is, okay, how, how do I find something that doesn't... Uh, doesn't need an extra two by four or things like that. That's where I came across these stands. So wanted to show you guys this for a handful of reasons, because of the ease, because of the height adjustment and everything like that. I can get this at a comfortable working height for myself. If I needed it to go up taller, I just cha change where the uh, chain link is. But I think what I like the most about it is, is when I cut a board off of one side or the other, I know that it's going to hold it up and it's not going to fall down. I'm not going to cut through here and end up with a big splinter as it fell off. So it just, it's just, it's really something nice to think about. Now, if I wanted to do this setup with sawhorses, now I'd have to have four sawhorses where every one of these arms is or surfaces is. So for me, I think this is going to work out really well. And there's one other thing that I did with these that I want to show you. And especially if you get two of them together, it really makes it nice. I've got both of these set up and they're both at the same exact height. How do I know that? Well, because they're the same amount of chain links that it's hooked into. And as I was putting these together, I got to looking at that and started counting the chain links to make sure this one was the same as that one and then started counting the chain links for this one to make sure it was the same as that, to make sure that it was completely level all the way across. Well, I got to thinking, there's got to be a better way, because I don't want to stand here and count chain links. So all I did was took and color-coded every other link. And what that does is now I don't have to go, okay, it was five links out. I don't have to count them. All I have to do is go look at it and say, okay, it's on the red link or it's on the black link or it's on the yellow link or it is between the red and the yellow link so when i do my adjustment on this 
Now it is a very quick, okay, I am gonna go with one after the black link, hook that on. And I know when I go over to that one, it's one after the black link. And then when I go to this one, I don't have to count the chain links either. And it was just, it's just that simple. And it's all they did that with was um, three different color paint pens. If you're looking for a work stand that is much better and simpler than a sawhorse, but I honestly think with adding the PVC on the top, and color coding the chain links that these are going to be one of my go-to uh saw horses if you will or work stands but i don't want to stop there because i've got one more interesting stand let's take a quick wander over here and let me show you these other ones that i have and the space that they take that's it right there there's two of them here's one and here's the other. You might be looking at these wondering, what in the world are those things? These are what's called a Bora centipede stand. And I got these on Amazon. Well, they sell these things in all different sizes. This particular one happens to be considered a two foot by four foot platform area or work area, as well as this one. So again, I got two of them. And let me show you how they work real quick. Take this stand. And when you need to open it up to your work surface, just pull it out. It is absolutely that simple. And you can see, I pull it together, it's just as simple. So these are not sponsored. Those were not sponsored. None of this stuff was sponsored. But anyhow, so you know that these were a bought an item that I purchased. And now I've got a flat work surface that I could lay a piece of plywood or something on and I don't have that but let's just uh, pretend this is a piece of plywood and we throw it on that work stand there now the reason that I bought two of them is let's say I want to put a piece of four by eight sheet of plywood on there so now I set this up four foot long this way and set this one up four foot long that way so now I've got a big area here that I can work on on a sheet of plywood and I can I can cut it down through the middle and the same kind of concept as, as those stands is when I cut a sheet of plywood down through the middle half of it stays on this one and the other half stays on this one it doesn't have to fall to the ground which is always a huge benefit so you're not chipping and dinging up expensive boards that you paid for, especially a sheet of plywood. There's some attachments that go with these that I'd like to show you. I don't remember if these come with the kit with a single unit or they sell it as an option or it's part of it. But anyhow, these go into those little holes here and they're for holding a two by four. So let's say you wanted to have some extra support across there. And the other neat thing about it is, is you can pivot this 360 degrees to bring that two by four in or out. So now, if I got a couple two by fours that I needed to do some support with, just put them on there like that. And let's say I wanted to lay a bunch of uh, spindles or railings on here. I could set them all down. I could paint them this way whatever it would work out that way another thing that the uh, engineers were thinking of when they designed these things is you can also pivot this that way pivot that that way and now you can actually stand your two by four up on that let's do it with both of them there's a couple other attachments that you can get for these stands that i kind of want to show you and it's a compression clamp how does that work you ask well it fits in these same holes that those other brackets fit into for holding the two by two by four on there you go down into those holes and you just push down on it and when you push down on it it bends that up and lets it flex and it gives it just enough pressure on there that it clamps down on those boards that you've got in there. So I wanted to give you guys a point of view as to there got to be an easier way than these 
plastic sawhorses or their big brother wooden ones that uh, are so difficult to store the big wooden ones and those ones are basically just junk and ready to leave your project laying on the floor so i uh, really enjoy these two types of stands i hope that you've never seen anything like this and i was able to bring you guys something different to watch today and uh, the abilities of how they work and how i would use them or even how you guys might use them once you've seen uh, the ease of function and the storability and space so i'm always looking for something that uh, I guess makes my life a little easier and I really enjoy sharing it on this YouTube platform with you guys to maybe help give you ideas on better ways to do things. So again, fold that up or fold this up. I guess I'm kind of torn between the two and I think I'm going to use both of them quite a bit. If you liked the video and you thought it was informative and now you can't wait to go look this one up or go get a set of these. I guess leave me a thumbs up. Let me know which one of these two do you think you would actually prefer more? Which one would you use more based on the storability or it's uh, the benefits that they both have? So let me know that in the comments. Hit that subscribe button and uh, I will see you again on the next one. Thanks.